This is the chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. The chart of accounts lists all of the accounts in the company file. Each of the rows here represent a specific account. Whenever you record a transaction, it is recorded into an account. Storing transactions in specific accounts facilitates organization and later on analysis of that data. And to organize and later reference accounts in a company file, you use the chart of accounts. Chart of accounts is simply a fancy term that accountants use to define a list of all of the accounts required to record all of the transactions that a company engages in in day-to-day -day operations. A typical chart of accounts contains name of the account, a unique number for the account, a short description, and the type of account. While creating the company file for the first time, when you set the industry type and the business type, QuickBooks automatically generates a boilerplate chart of accounts for your business. Let us look at the structure of a sample chart of accounts so that you can better understand the concepts and later set it up for your own business. You have five main account types. Assets, which are stuff that the business owns. Liabilities, which are stuff that the business owes to external parties. And equity, which is the stuff that the business owes to the owners and shareholders. The other two account types are the income accounts that record the various revenue sources that bring in money into the organization and the expenses accounts that record the outgoing flow of money. Another important thing is the account number which also helps to organize the chart of accounts. There is a easy way to name and number the accounts in the chart of accounts. Basically any asset account starts with one liabilities with two equity with three, revenue with four, cost of sales with five and operating expenses with six. And you can then choose the number of digits that you want in order to create unique IDs for each of the accounts. I'm going to start off with assets because this is what your company owns. And first of all, we'll create accounts for current assets. So the first account that you need to create is a checking account. And I also like to create a separate checking account and that is for payroll wages. Then I also have a business checking account which stores all of the amount of retained earnings that I want to save for future investments and to pay off immediate debts in case of an emergency. Then we need two accounts to keep track of receivables. The first is the accounts receivable account which will store all of the amount that your customers owe to you and then you will have the other receivable accounts which will store the amount that other parties that are not your customers owe to you. So let's say if you have issued a short term loan to someone then you can store that in other receivables. If you make advanced payment to vendors or suppliers, let's say you subscribe to a software and you pay a yearly price instead of a monthly one, then you can set up a prepaid expense account to keep track of all of the advanced payments. Moving on from current assets, you will require a few fixed assets account and most important of these are going to be plant, property and equipment account. So you will need a computer equipment account, an office equipment account and if you purchase a vehicle, then a vehicle account. Here's the thing about plant, property and equipment. You may want to apply depreciation on it so that you can use the depreciation expense to show that you generate a lower amount of profit and reduce your tax obligation. If you want to do that, then you need an accumulated depreciation account and maybe also an original cost account for that specific fixed asset on which depreciation is applied. Moving on to liabilities and these are things that the business owes to external parties. You will again have current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Current liabilities are those that are due in the short term that is in less than a year and long-term liabilities usually you pay off over several fiscal years. In current liabilities you will need the accounts payable account to record the amount that you owe to your vendors so if you purchase on credit you can record that amount you will need a wages payable account that stores the wages that you owe to your employees or contractors subcontractors 
And if you have to pay sales tax and record it in QuickBooks, you will also need a sales tax payable account, which will store the amount that you need to pay in taxes to the appropriate tax agency. And then other payables, which may store things like line of credit that you take from your bank. Another important thing is credit card accounts. And for each credit card that you are using for business or other people in your business are using for business purposes, you will want to create a separate account to keep track of the amount that is charged on that credit card In other current liabilities you can create an account for deferred revenue that is advanced payment that you received from your customers and the current portion of long-term liabilities the loan that you have taken from a bank that you need to pay in the current financial year and non-current liabilities you can create a notes payable account to keep track of long-term loans that you have to pay over several years equity account will keep track of all of the amount that the business owes to the owners and shareholders so you'll have the owner's equity account or the owner's contribution account which stores the original value contributed by the owner there may be a contra account which is an owner's draw account which records the value that the owner withdrew from the business then you may have the retained earnings account if the business keeps a part of profit and does not distribute it to the owner and finally you will have the net profit account which will keep track of the net profit for the current financial year and to calculate the net profit you will need income and expense accounts in income account you will generally have a main income account that records the income from your main revenue sources and an other income account which records income from other activities that are not related to the main products and services that your business provides keeping these two amounts separate is going to help you out in figuring out how much is your actual product or service generating in revenue and within the main revenue account you'll want to create a bifurcation so you'll have sub accounts for each of the products and services that you provide so that you can record the revenue generated by each product separately this will later help you on in calculating the total revenue or profit generated by each of the products or services so if you are a design agency maybe you'll have a design income account then you'll have a video income account a photo editing income account and so on moving on to the expenses you'll have again two different accounts the first type of expense accounts will be the cost of sales accounts cost of sales is the cost incurred in producing manufacturing or providing the product or service that your business generates revenue from these are the main revenue generating activities so the cost of sales may include a cost of goods sold account if you are a merchandising business or a manufacturing business then you will have the subscription that you may be purchased for a software so the subscription cost goes into the cost of sales and since this is a design agency providing printing services as well will also include the cost of the paper in the cost of sales now when you remove cost of sales from the income you get the gross profit for your business the next thing that you need to look at is operating expenses which is the second part of the expenses account and in operating expenses you have things like the amount spent on paid marketing the salaries for marketing teams the salaries for sales teams so these are things that are not directly related to producing the product or service that you are giving to consumers or clients let's just zoom out a bit the top three are the balance sheet accounts and the bottom two are the income statement accounts the balance of the balance sheet accounts is carried over to the next financial year and for the income and expense account you take the total income remove the total expenses and note the net profit into the balance sheet in the next financial year the account balance for these accounts that is the income and expense accounts is going to be zero as you grow your business diversify your offerings you may want to create new accounts for each of the products and services income types expenses if you purchase fixed assets then you may want to create asset accounts for those purposes and this is a never-ending process that you'll have to review again and again so to sum this up in short the first step is to select the appropriate business type or industry type then you need to simply brainstorm ideas as to what accounts your business is going to need and maybe even list them down on a piece of paper and then finally you'll have to create those accounts and if you don't use particular accounts then you can make them inactive let's just look at quickbooks online for a second here before you even start creating accounts it is generally a good practice to activate 
the account numbers in QuickBooks. Account numbers are not really active by default and that is because with accounting software you don't have to actually create unique IDs every time for each account that you create but it is a generally good practice to do so. So I'll go over to the settings icon here and click on account and settings. In here I can go to the advanced tab and then in the chart of accounts section I can select the pencil icon and enable account numbers and because I want to see the account numbers in the chart of accounts and in reports I'll mark the option to show account numbers and then I'll save and done okay so I have activated the chart of accounts numbers and I should be able to see that when I go to the chart of accounts you can see now that there's a column for account numbers and you can even use the account numbers to sort the list of accounts okay so now we have the account numbers we'll want to create a few accounts that we require now let's take an example scenario your business purchases a vehicle and since this is a hypothetical scenario let's go a step further let's say you purchase a spaceship for international delivery to record the value for the spaceship you need to create a new account and before you do that just switch over to the accountant view if you go to the gear icon you can do that from there and you will see that switch to accountant view option is present now select new and select the type of account that you want to create because i'm creating a fixed asset account i'll select assets I'll save it under fixed assets in the tax form section I'll select vehicles this information can help you later on easily file taxes and report depreciation expenses in this I'll select the spaceship account and I'll also enter a account number now as per the standard you can select an account number such as 14001 and you can enter a description you can set the opening balance if there's already available balance in this account type so if you have a previously owned spaceship and you want to record its value you can do that with the opening balance option QuickBooks will also give you a brief view of the balance sheet and where this account will appear in the balance sheet and you can see that it is under fixed assets as the spaceship account i'm going to save it now i should have a spaceship account and now i want to create another account which is an original cost account to uh, record the value of to record the original value that i spent on acquiring the spaceship on purchasing it so again new account assets again i want to save it under spaceship it is going to go into the vehicle section and i'm going to use the name original cost the account number would be 14002 and i'm going to save it and i have another account and that is saved under the spaceship account i have the account number the balance of the account i also want to track the depreciation that is applied to this item and i'm going to let's say use it for five years and for that i'll create an accumulated depreciation account again i'll go back to new and assets accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account so it is an asset account but it has a negative value to that of the original asset account so if the asset account has a debit value this will have a credit value i'll again save it under spaceship and i'll select the tax form section as accumulated depreciation i'll enter the name of the account that is accumulated depreciation and i'll enter the name of the account now if i want to keep all of the depreciation accounts separate and i want to see them in one place i can have a separate number for them that is any account starting with a 16 is a depreciation account and i'm going to save it so you can see that it is very easy to create new accounts but what if you want to edit an account because a lot of these accounts they don't really have an account number 
and you want to include an account number in it how do you do that again in the chart of accounts menu go to the drop down menu and select edit and in here you can make the necessary adjustments so i'll go with one triple zero one and i can enter a description and then save it so now i have this account as well and i have made the necessary adjustments now if you are setting this up all by yourself you can follow this process however if you have received a list of chart of accounts from your accountant then you can use that list and import it directly into quickbooks online and to do that you can simply go over to the drop down option here and click on import then select browse then select the excel file that contains the chart of accounts and click on next so you can map the fields here and you can match the field in quickbooks online to the column in the excel sheet once you have made the required changes you can go to next and here you have the option to make a few changes to the data that you are importing so you can deselect the options that you don't want to import and you can also make a few changes accordingly then you can select import and all of these accounts will be imported into quickbooks online and this is an easy process to configure and get started with quickbooks online if an accountant or a bookkeeper is helping you out with this process now the next thing i want to take a look at is in activating accounts because if quickbooks sets up a boilerplate chart of accounts for you and let's say you don't require a particular account you cannot delete it and that is because quickbooks disables that feature and here's why you delete an account all of the transactions stored in it vanish as well so this option isn't available however if you don't want to view that account in your company file or when you are creating transactions or forms or reports here's what you do you make those accounts inactive now let's say i have this account that i created and this is the original cost account i don't want it anymore i think that this is a bullshit account and i can make it inactive so i'll go to the drop down icon and select make inactive and i'll confirm and quickbooks will make that account inactive and you can see that it does not show up in the list here and it will not show up in any of the reports that you create if you want to see a list of all of the inactive accounts in a company file you can go to the settings icon and include inactive you can then see that there's an inactive account here and it states that this account has been deleted which is not true it has not been deleted it is still available so if you think that you may want to use this account again if the need arises to record a transaction in this account you can make it active and select the accounts view it in reports and work with it like it is a normal account that never went away that is it for chart of accounts and if you want to view a video on and if you want tips and tricks on how to ensure that you are setting up the chart of accounts properly then click on the video link here and if you found this video helpful hit the subscribe button